And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I'm proud to present to you Onitama. This is the second game in the Dice Towers Essentials line. The Dice Tower Essentials line is a line that I'm working with with Arcane Wonders, in which I bring them games which I think are amazing, just wonderful, in fact, essential to gamers' collections. The first one was Sheriff of Nottingham, and the second one now is Onitama. This is a game I discovered from a small publisher in Japan and brought it to them because it is one of the best two-player abstracts I have ever played. It is quick, it is intriguing, it is back and forth. Now, this is not a review, this is more of kind of you showing how the game is, but obviously I love the game. If I didn't, it would not be part of this line. And so I'm really excited about this. This is the very first copy of the game. It should be in stores in a month or two, so keep an eye out for it. Let's see how it plays. All right, so let's take a look here. The box is one of those boxes that has the magnetic clasp. When you open it up inside here, you have the board, which is one of those mouse pad type boards. Love these boards. And then you have the cards. These are really big cards, uh, which are gonna show how movement works in the game. And then we have the pieces. So these pieces, ah, there's just something about placing these pieces on that mat. That's really cool. So you place the pieces like this. Everything fits easily in the box. The rules are right here on the side. The rules are only a couple pages, really, because that's how long the game is. It's a very short game. So let's see how the game plays. Each player starts with a master and four student pawns that they're going to be that they have here. The goal of the game is one of two things. Either by capturing your opponent's master, any piece can capture him. If he's captured, you win. Or by getting your master to land on the pagoda, the center back row of the opponent. So either one of those ways, you win the game. Now 16 cards are included in the game, but you're only gonna be using five of these cards in the course of a game. So you'll draw five, two go to one player, Two go to the other player. The fifth is put face up. The fifth also, you look in the corner here and it shows you which player goes first. Now these two cards are placed face up in front of you and on your turn, one player goes first. Again, chosen by the fifth card. That player is going to move one of their pieces using either card. So for here, the crab card or the rooster card. So the card's gonna be facing like this. And so I, for example, might want to use this guy here, my master, and that lets me go one forward or two to either side. Now he can't jump two to either side because his own pawn is there and you can never land on your own pawn. So perhaps he uses the crab to go one space forward. He could also use the rooster uh, card which lets you go one to the side in either direction or one to the side and backwards or one to the side and forward. So he could also use the rooster card to go here, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to use the crab card. Now once I've used the crab card, I switch that card with the card that was in the middle. And now I have these two cards. So my opponent, the crab card, I've played it so it goes to the middle. My opponent's going to play one of their two cards, which are the elephant and the dragon. And you might be sitting there going, wow, the dragon's a really cool card, right? But if my opponent uses that on their turn to go move diagonally, so maybe they use this pawn here to go like that with the dragon card. They will then switch that dragon card with the crab card and now next turn I'm gonna be getting the dragon card after I play one of mine. If you land on another piece, somehow a card lets you land on another piece, that piece is captured. Of course, you know, you might be captured yourself and if your master's captured, you lose the game. And you can't land on your own pieces. You're not blocked in this game. So for example, if something lets me move here, I can do so. This piece doesn't block me. And that is the game. Really, other than that, it's just different cards. Like the Cobra here is about going on one side. The Rabbit lets you move back diagonally. And the cards all are gonna let you move in different ways. So when it's your turn, you're not only looking at your two cards, you're looking at the card that you're about to get. You're looking at the cards that your opponent has because you may be able to move to a spot because you can see the two cards they have, they can't stop you. They can't get you next turn. And so you're using these basically to try to take out your opponent's master and take out as many of the other pawns so that your master has a clear way in. And games are about five to 10 minutes or so. And then you can just shuffle the cards and draw five new cards. Every game is gonna be different because the five cards that are played with are going to have a different feel to how the, you know, the strategies and the tactics of the game.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff. Gosh darn door! Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Boo!